Hey, what's up? I'm Austin Griffith. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff we want to add into the burner wallet and not enough time. So I'm hoping I can get some help with building some modules. The The repo itself is a little bit um, complicated because there's Clevis and Apparatus. What the heck does it all mean? I want to make sure to make it very, very easy for someone uh, in the ecosystem to easily jump in and build a small little UI that talks to a smart contract within the burner wallet. So here's how it works. Basically, uh, we're going to set you up with uh, a component in React, right? So this is your module. We're going to pass in all the stuff to you so you don't have to worry about all the other burner wallet junk. You just have an XDI Web3, a mainnet Web3, you have a transaction function, everything that you need, a contract loader, everything that you need to do Web3 stuff in this nice little module that you can do what you need to do and it's going to look and feel like burner wallet stuff. So how do you do that? Okay, so get Ganache running, clone down the repo, do an npx clevis init, npm install. This will take like 10 minutes. I'm breezing through it. Link up clevis, do a clevis test full, npm start, and boom, you've got a burner wallet locally that you can start uh, iterating on. But we'd, we'd rather you not have to dive into the burner wallet code and learn all of our stuff. It would be cool if you could just kind of have some scaffolding and fill it in, right? So if you check out the your module branch, so get check out your module, you will have this kind of ugly scaffolding that I've created here that just has like, okay, you have all your web threes connected. You can tell that we, we already have the price of ETH for you. We have a transactions object that you can call. We uh, have a lot of contracts loaded up, but we have a contract loader for you ready to go. So kind of all the, all the stuff that's already kind of part of the burner is passed into you to make your life easier. But hopefully you can still interact with all the, you know, your, your technology stack. So check out the source components, your module.js file. That's here. And uh, you'll see that the first thing is kind of bringing in your contracts, right? So if you probably you probably already have your contracts deployed to XDI, I'm assuming, or or the main net. We'll we'll see how these modules work out. And uh, what you need to do is place your files in the source uh, source slash contracts folder. So your contract .abi .address uh, dot block number and dot bytecode for some efficiency stuff or redeploying. But basically you can load your contract into the state with that right there. And so first thing you want to do when you're building the module is get your contract loaded in. Once you've got your contract loaded in, you could do some reads from it, right? But you probably want to do that on an interval. So that's the next piece is there's this uh, pull interval. And it's just going to happen every, you know, twice every five seconds or something but, but inside this interval you can start talking to your contracts right you'll notice that your contract dot your ver there's not a dot methods there uh, the way the contract loader takes takes out the dot methods if you're used to doing that but this this seems a little bit more straightforward to me uh, so yeah basically you can call on your contract there uh, what's next? So the TX function. This is this is another abstraction that is provided by Dapparatus, but it's a TX function that is passed in from your props. But what you pass it is basically your contract dot the function you want to call with some arguments. So so in this we're we're calling this dot props dot TX, which means we want to make a transaction, and it's going to be with this contract we want to call the update ver with this argument. So you you basically put in your, your contract call with the arguments, and there's gas and value and stuff here. But this lets you do a transaction just in a single line, and then when the transaction goes through, you get a call back. So it's just kind of a nice abstraction to making transactions that, that should make your life a little easier. The problem is when we each have our own different abstractions, it just turns into a mess. So uh, also along with the transaction is a send function. So send is for sending value. Uh, let me find it in here. So when you hit this button right here, it's going to send uh, 0.01 xdi to this address with no data. Just another nice little abstraction to make things a little bit faster, but hopefully not more complicated. <laughs> Um, there's an events object that comes in from Dapparatus also that's going to listen to your contract events. Uh, if we search that out, we can see that there is basically our contract, our event name, uh, and then what to do when it reaches, when, the, when there's a new event, it's just kind of plugging them into the state there. 
uh, deployment. If you want to deploy your own contract, there's a nice little deploy function in here that shows you exactly how we're doing dynamic deployment where the user can just hit a button within the UI and deploy the contract and it saves it to the state so you can interact with it. I've already talked about the interval. So, so really this is just some scaffolding, a nice little template that, that hopefully makes it a little bit easier for someone from the ecosystem to get in and help us build modules within the burner. You, you build a nice little module and, and we'll take it and run with it for sure. Like we'll help you get it integrated, we'll set it up. So, so like a great idea is like a prediction market. How, how can we set it up so we can let someone make just like, just have like one or two prediction markets in their burner wallet. So they open up their burner wallet and they could, you know, buy a position on one side or the other. Well, we're gonna have to talk to your contracts, we're gonna have to hit some UI, and then, you know, at the bottom, let's send them to your website and let them get deeper into the decentralized world. But the point is, like, when my Gam Gam pulls it up, it needs to be simple enough that she can participate in a prediction market and then learn more if she wants to. And that's that's kind of the goal with these modules. This is sort of be like an onboarding platform, I hope. We'll see. I, I built Emoji Coin Dot Exchange as a, as a good example of this. It's a nice, it's like a fun, goofy little game that that exists within a burner wallet. But the the point was like eighty percent of the room was just on board in seconds. It, 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 it's at the top of the funnel. We have people driving in, but then like we have to make these little modules to talk to these smart contracts, that need, and they need to be like just stupid, simple, easy. Awesome. Hit me up with feedback. I'm at Austin Griffith on Twitter and Telegram. Uh, let's get some cool stuff built out. Uh, fork the repo. Get the get the module working as you want. Talk talk to me and let's get it right into the the burner wallet itself. Cool. Happy building.